Hello boys and girls, Itai here and we are, this is another this is the next video in the uh, Embraer 175 normal procedure flows and uh, and procedures basically based on just generic sequences that uh, uh, just a little modified version of what we do in my real airline unfortunately I cannot share with you the actual SOP that I use um, but I can show you what I'm doing uh, just in general so you'll be able to approach um, the simulator version of uh, what you have um, installed at home. One thing I did forget to do, we did do the entire uh, before start, uh, up to before start, everything is fully set up for the departure, the doors are already closed, we are ready to release the brakes with, uh, uh, with coordination of uh, ground crew, so I'm just gonna make them prepare for the pushback and departure. At this point, we would establish communication with them and be ready for the uh, brake release. Uh, the we can see that the gates are the gate is in motion. Another thing I did forget to do as part of the uh, as part of the uh, performance and uh, thrust rating selection, I forgot to hit toga. So once I do hit toga now, you can see the prompts on the FMA. We all we have track, and that's this is not correct. We would not see FBA here. We would see uh, roll toga or roll roll to. So that's not actually correct. Let's see. Roll FBA. Eh, I guess. Anyway, let's just leave it at that. That's not realistic. So we are. I uh, just want to show you real quick. We are right now in uh, Gate Echo Five in Chicago over here. I'm not going to go uh, all the way until departure. I'm just going to summarize what should happen until we take off uh, in this video. And I'm going to do that right here close to the stand. So Echo 5, we're fully ready for the pushback. It's going to be a nose right, tail left push. Alrighty, so... Uh, I would verify that the steer off prompt is there. It is not. I'm honestly there might be like a key binding to get it. I didn't bother checking, so that should be there. And I would tell them, okay. Um, I would make sure that we have the clearance to push back from the ramp control. And so once this uh, clearance has been granted, I would coordinate. Hey, ground cockpit, are we clear to release the brakes? Yes, we are. Okay. Once I'm releasing the brakes. Uh, if you have the green light on the ground, brake off, steer off, you guys are clear to push. And they're giving us the permission to start the engine. Uh, by the way, I can also see here that there's, it's wrong, but the magenta um, FMS selected speed should be not 210, it should be the V2. So it should have been 143 here. Anyway, we're pushing back, we've been given in uh, clearance to start in my airline it's very typical for us to taxi out on one engine and when uh, takeoff is assured to be in um, in about uh, three to five minutes we would start the other engine in flight simulator unfortunately it's not that the mechanics are not just not good for single engine taxi uh, so we do obviously have the option to start both engines at the same time so that's what I'm going to show you now so APU is on that's why we have the pressure and the bleed APU valve we can verify that the uh, that the uh, duct pressure uh, is uh, is good. We have, we want to see at least 40 um, here. That means we have sufficient pressure to start the engine. So I will say start engine one and just get the guard off and start to one. And I'm going to start the clock. They want me to set the parking brake. So parking brake set. You guys are clear to disconnect. Thanks for the push and. Uh, I'll watch for the hand signals on the left side. Have a good day. We're watching it. Um, I'm not going to mention, I'm not going to talk through the entire what is the engine doing when it's starting, but it's basically starting as we see. And as soon as the engine start is complete, as soon as the engine start is complete, we can see that the ITT limit is jumping to the takeoff limit. So that's a little bit unrealistic. It it starts here with the limit and once the engine is fully started uh, the ITT l limit is going to here and that's how we know that we have a good engine start 
We probably want to see that they disconnect uh, with the tug and the tow bar and the crew. Okay, and here's the wave. Good. Start engine two. And then the FL would start the flight. Uh, first officer will start engine number two. And again, I'm I'm not gonna talk through that too much. Uh, the clock should be running. Uh, as you can see, this is actually good. We can see that the uh, ITT lim limit is slightly lower for engine start. As soon as the engine is fully started, we would see that the ITT limit is jumping up. Uh, it, it's you see, it's too early, really. The engine should have been stabilized, and then the ITT limit would jump up. But uh, we want to see that the engine stabilizes. It's not really the most realistic sequ sequence that you're seeing here, but uh, it's it's good enough. Also, burning way too much fuel, <laughs> though. Yep, yeah, it is what it is. That's kind of an old add-on, but I just want to show you the the procedure. Uh, another thing I missed in the um, in the performance um, setup is that pitch trim uh, would be 3.0. It is 3.0 set. And good. Now that both engines have been started, we have a little slow to do, and the flow is to get the hydraulic electric hydraulic pumps two and one to auto and the APU off okay and uh, once that's done we're basically done with the engine start at this point we might be still waiting for the ground personnel to uh, uh, to push us uh, back but since we have seen them we have seen the wave from the ground personnel so they are away enough from the airport um, we can get the flaps to two and we can get the flight controls checked because they're far enough away. By the way, since both engines have started, I want to restart the timer. And we want to see here at least two minutes when we're ready for takeoff. So that's why it's very important to get this timer running and after the second engine start. We can see your damper is still off. Um, in real life, it would automatically turn on. But if it's not, we can just press this button and force it on. Okay, at this point, um, both engines have started. The flaps are coming to uh, position number two. APU is shutting down. We can get the flight control check. So, pull up, pull down, pull left, pull right. And uh, again, with the steer, s the steer off still, still activated or deactivated I will check the rudder because we don't want the nose gear to move we just want the rudder itself to move once everything is back on neutral I can hit uh, I can uh, push down on the uh, on the uh, nose wheel steering uh, handle and uh, and uh, then the, the, the prompt would turn off and at this point uh, the ICAS should really state pretty much nothing and uh, we can do the after start checklist. I'm not going to go through the actual after start checklist, but at this point we're ready to call for the taxi. When we start taxiing, when we got the clearance to start taxiing, we'd get the nose uh, taxi light on, and uh, we could uh, basically start our taxi. Okay. Uh, while we are taxiing, we're waiting on the light ends to confirm that they're secure for takeoff. Okay, as soon as they're secured, and we have at least two minutes here, uh, we're just basically checking that the um, that the brake temperatures are in the green. They're not in the amber range; it's still in the green range. And uh, after that, uh, we are fully ready for takeoff. So as we're taxiing, we would taxi with the lights on. When it's time to uh, line up and wait. We can just turn the strobe lights, the nose landing light, and the inspection light. And we would do the before take-up procedure. So we would give the flight attendants a little ding-dong, ding-dong. 
um, would check the uh, we would check the, f the takeoff configuration check for the takeoff configuration check I would need to have the parking brake off and let's do a configuration check takeoff okay there we go we got the takeoff okay and then we can run the before takeoff checklist um, and of course the auto throttle can come on as well so oh, that's not realistic it shouldn't throttle. really throttle. it's not really shouldn't really come on it should be armed basically that's, that's what I'm trying to say throttle. so the auto throttle should be armed it would be white over here um, and once we're fully clear for takeoff we can get the rest of the lights on. If it's not dark, we don't really need the logo lights, but basically the, all the lights are on. And then we are, we are fully ready for takeoff. And we're just taxiing along here. I honestly don't have any intention to, to show you how this thing flies, because I don't think it's going to be that accurate, to be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's how we... Uh, get this thing um, uh, going so uh, I'll just do the next video to show you what to do after landing and into the gate otherwise thanks for watching I hope you enjoy that if you have any comments or uh, uh, anything to add anything uh, maybe you know of a company that does things a little bit differently I'm, I'll be, be very interesting to hear, to hear and compare um, otherwise uh, I'll see you in the next videos thank you